Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my director spotlight on Koji Wakamatsu, who began his directing career in the early 1960s and continued through to the early 2010s. Although mostly unknown to most Western movie fans, those who are familiar with him have likely been exposed to some of his Pinku Ega titles, which is a genre of erotic films produced in Japan. Although I don't think he necessarily classified his own films as such, but other people have. Now he did make other kinds of films, of course, such as straight dramas, political dramas, crime flicks, documentaries, etc. But he is most well known for his racier titles. Now like some of the other Japanese directors I've been covering in this director spotlight playlist on this YouTube channel, uh, I'll include a link to that playlist in the description box below. I consider Wakamatsu to be underappreciated. You know, some of this is due to lack of exposure to fans in the West, but it's also due to the kinds of films that he made. You know, while truly he made multiple kinds of movies, a good chunk of his filmography is going to rub normal people the wrong way. Because a lot of people simply do not want like watching, you know, rampant nudity or uh, rape or disturbing acts of violence in their films. However, as I go through my top 10, we will see that there is some legit high quality dramas on the list that would impress a number of people if they gave them a chance. This is especially true for my top two picks. So if you're cringing to yourself as I'm going through my top 10 and I'm laying it out, just stick with me because I think my last few titles may interest you. But before I reveal my list, I just have a few more quick thoughts. You know, when I think of Japanese exploitation films, Three directors immediately pop in my mind, Hisiasu Sato, Takashi Ishii, and Koji Wakamatsu. And the reason for this is that these directors have a knack for holding my interest in films that could you know, very easily become monotonous and boring. Boobies and butts are only going to hold my interest for so long. You know, I like them, I like them, but you need to give me something else. And Wakamatsu has been successful at doing this. And it's not just because his edgier films tend to be a bit more violent than the typical Pinku Ega film, which helps, don't get me wrong. But it's the feeling of craftsmanship that I get while I watch his better films. You know, the character interaction, the direction, the camera work, uh, the political subtext, of which there's a lot in his filmography. Uh, they all combine to create a pretty interesting viewing experience, I think. So let's get to the list. My thoughts on each film will be very brief. Primarily because this is a list video, not a review. And remember, titles for all the films I discuss will be listed in the description box below. I am not providing availability information in this playlist because most of these films I saw years ago and availability has changed over time. My usual method for checking availability is Google. So be sure to seek out any films that seem interesting to you. Although a number of this director's films are hard to find. So let's go. Number 10. Violent Virgin, 1969, this is a dramatic thriller. This bizarre film involves a man and woman who have been kidnapped by a gang and humiliated in an open field. There's an odd, dreamy quality to this one, due primarily to its visuals and relaxing natural environments. There's also a bit of playfulness, despite the downbeat premise. Viewer beware that there is a lot of nudity and sex, which is a common trait throughout this director's filmography. But this is probably not for mainstream viewers, but still, it's interesting in its edgy weirdness. Number 9. Erotic Liaisons, 1992. This is a drama-thriller-comedy hybrid. So set in Paris, two private detectives who operate a tour guide business on the side agree to investigate the mistress of their new client, played by Takeshi Kitano. Now this film opens with a funny disclaimer and there is a presence of humor underneath the surface for the remainder of the runtime. It is leisurely paced, but involves some scheming and possible double crosses. A nice little genre bender that is a bit different from any of this director's other works. Number 8, Serial Rapist, 1978. This is a horror film. It's about a chubby guy who rapes and shoots random women in the vagina. Now, I told you some of Wakamatsu's films are not for most viewers, and this is another one of those. The aforementioned act of violence is basically the only thing that happens in this film. However, the aesthetic qualities and the direction make it engaging to watch, 
for fans of sleazy horror flicks. Visuals are drab and gritty. The score is an odd mix of percussion, noises, saxophone, and city sounds that are very effective in how it unnerves the viewer. The brief 60-minute runtime also helps. So fans of uh, gritty exploitation flicks should definitely check this one out if they can. Number 7, Vengeance Demon 1968. I would also classify this as a horror film. So after his sister is raped by villagers, a man seeks vengeance by brutally killing the townsfolk. So this film is surprisingly bloody and violent given the, the time and, and year in which it was made. You know, Fueled by a seething rage, this protagonist brutally murders some of the women by slicing them between the legs with a samurai sword. So yet again, mainstream viewers will not be able to endure this one, but it is a briskly paced and surprisingly engaging film for fans of that type of thing. You know, it's a good flick if you're, if you're into this type of thing. Number six, Naked Bullet, 1969. This is a crime drama action flick. So after botching an attempt to flee with a beautiful woman, a low-level Yakuza is given another chance, years later, but vows this time to succeed. This is a pretty cool and stylish film by Wakamatsu that has a good shootout near the end. Still quite a bit of nudity here, which is no surprise, but the common premise and subgenre will make this one a little bit more enticing for mainstream audiences to check out. Number 5, Go Go Second Time Virgin, 1969. This is a drama-horror hybrid. After being raped on a rooftop, a 19-year-old girl meets a mysterious boy, and both share their sexual traumas and fears. Only 66 minutes long, this is an odd, perverted little film by Wakamatsu. You know, the characters basically hang out and talk, then engage in acts of violence. An interesting watch, though, likely due to its visual style and dark tone. There are bloody corpse shots and a somewhat depressing mood. This is the kind of film that expresses a certain artistry and craftsmanship that I admire about this director, arguably his most popular film internationally. Number 4, A Pool Without Water, 1982. This is a dramatic thriller. Stifled by the pressures of life, a middle-aged married man decides to stalk young women as he fantasizes about raping them in their sleep. This is a deliberately paced, quiet film with minimal dialogue that is perverted and sleazy, yet oddly calming at the same time. You know, it does get a, a little bit repetitive at times with the bedroom molestation scenes, but it's certainly interesting if, if you're in the, you know, if you're a, f a fan of this kind of thing. Number three, The Embryo Hunts in Secret, 1966. This is a thriller. A psychologically unstable man abducts and tortures a woman who looks like his former wife. Now, there's some interesting psychology present here, as well as some good dialogue. Although the setting is almost exclusively within an apartment, this is nicely directed and surprisingly compelling. The theme of childbirth is omnipresent as well, which is quite fascinating. Of all of Wakamatsu's edgier works, I found this title to be one of the most interesting to watch. So we've reached my top two favorite films by this director, and both of them are must-sees in my opinion. And this is true regardless of your movie tastes. Number two is Caterpillar, 2010. This is a drama. This film is based on Edogawa Rampo's short story about the relationship between a soldier and his wife. Now, this soldier recently returns home horribly maimed from war, with no arms or legs, which creates an unwelcome situation for the wife. So this story was previously adapted within the horror anthology Rampo Noir, but this standalone movie is not a horror film. Instead, it's a character-based character drama that is also a critique of the right-wing militarist nationalism that guided Japan's conduct in Asia during the first half of the 20th century. With very good acting and characters, this has received much praise from critics and should be one of the first titles that one seeks out if they want to explore this director. And number one, my personal favorite Koji Wakamatsu film is... United Red Army, 2007. This is a political drama. Now, based on actual events, this tense film de details the formation of the early 1970s leftist paramilitary group, the United Red Army, the turmoil and strife within its ranks, and several members' perilous attempt to seize a mountainside lodge. So the lengthy opening section, which lasts about 40 minutes, uses 
archival footage, on-screen titles, and recreated scenes to give a bit of a history lesson, which is quite interesting. Subsequently, the army engages in a purification and strengthening process where the members, led by fanatical com commanders, undergo rigorous training, physical beatings, indoctrination, and even death while held up in desolate forest bases. So there's a little bit of repetition in this purification process, and with a runtime of about three full hours, you know, the film probably could have been clipped a bit. Uh, but there is a constant emphasis on self-criticism and killing dozens of their own members one at a time for trivial flaws. And that self-destructive ideological fanaticism seems to be the main point of the film. It ends with the famous uh, Asama Sanzo Mountain Lodge incident, which is lengthy and very gripping. There's plentiful violence in this film, but it's another great example of what makes Wakamatsu uh, so special as a director. So those were my personal favorite Koji Wakamatsu films. Certainly the most divisive director that I've covered so far in this playlist, and probably quite different from a lot of other uh, directors that I've covered so far, right? Understandably so. Many viewers will be turned off by the plot synopses alone that I mentioned in this list, but I do strongly recommend that everyone check out Caterpillar and United Red Army, and maybe even Go Go Second Time Virgin to start. And then, if you want to continue exploring like the dirtier titles in his filmography, you know, go for The Embryo Hunts in Secret or A Pool Without Water. But this is definitely a director who, uh, if you're willing to get a little dirty and uh, be a little adventurous, there's, there's a lot to like here, I think. So I hope this list can provide some recommendations for those who are unfamiliar with Wakamatsu. And if you've seen some of his films already, let me know your favorites in the comments section below. And as always, I'll see you next time.